Welcome to the Mitten Mysteries Podcast, hosted by Haley V. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Mitten Mysteries Podcast. I am your host, Haley V. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. If you are new here, we like to talk about all things creepy, strange, and unusual. Anything weird that happens here in the Mitten State, this is what we talk about here on this podcast. If you haven't already, make sure you guys go ahead and follow us over on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. We are literally everywhere. So if you guys want to follow us over there for extra content, then go ahead and follow us over there on our other social pages. They are all under the Mitten Mysteries. Also, if you could leave us a five-star review anywhere you're listening from today, that would be amazing. And if you're feeling a little fancy, you can go ahead and leave us a written review telling us what your name is and where you're listening from today and what you love about the show. All right, well, that's enough with the intro. Let's go ahead and get into today's show. If you grew up watching horror movies like I did, then you will know exactly what song this is from. Creepers, creepers, where'd you get those peepers? Jeepers Creepers, where'd you get those eyes? Now, if you said Jeepers Creepers, you would be correct. It's literally in the song name. And this movie, when I was younger, absolutely terrified me. This is one of the movies that I watched and it was like seared into my brain. And I could never forget this movie, even if I tried to. I was that traumatized watching it. Now, of course, this mythical creature is not real, but this story in the very beginning of the movie where you have Derry and Patricia passing by an old school slash church house and you see the creature dumping bodies from his truck into the tunnel. And then of course, when they're driving by, they see him and he sees them. And then he gets back into his truck and of course chases them down the freeway and they're driving erratic and he's trying to get past these people or try to you know ram them and finally they pull off the side of the road and then he keeps going but that part of the story allegedly based off of the story that happened in Coldwater, Michigan of the murder of Marilyn DePew by her husband, Dennis DePew on Easter Sunday in 1990. On Easter Sunday, April 15th, 1990, Ray and Marie Thornton were on a traditional drive that they would take every single week along Snow Prairie Road. And this was a rural highway 12 miles outside of Coldwater, Michigan. Now in the rear view mirror when they were driving, a Chevrolet van suddenly appeared driving very aggressively and almost overtaking them off the side of the road. So the couple had been playing a game and making up slogans from license plates of passing cars when they would see them. So when the van sped past them, Marie saw the plate beginning with GZ and remarked, geez, he's in a hurry. The two laughed about this. And as they approached an abandoned schoolhouse, the Thorntons saw the same van parked in the side of the building. Then Marie caught a disturbing sight that really creeped her out. The driver was holding what appeared to be a bloody sheet and walking towards the rear of the schoolhouse. Marie was obviously very shocked about this and was not quite sure what she had just witnessed. And so they were talking about it back and forth and they were discussing whether or not they should call the police. Ray Thornton saw an ominous van approaching again in his rear view mirror. He was gaining speed very fast in that same Chevy van that they had just seen at the schoolhouse, now very close to the rear bumper for the next two two miles. So a lot of people seem to believe that the beginning of the story had inspired the opening scene from the 2001 horror movie Jeepers Creepers. So the Thorntons were really worried about what the driver would do if they kept going and he was behind them, so they had turned off the highway. But just as fast as they turned off the highway, the van had suddenly pulled to the side of the road. They tried to look to see what the full license plate number said so they can get it to the police. So Ray Thornton turned his car around and they approached the green van again. Now, the man that had been driving was now crouched down and he was trying to change the rear license plate of the van. And as they were driving closer to it, the Thorntons could see the van's open front passenger door and in side was covered in blood. As they passed the van, they rushed back to the schoolhouse and the couple had come upon the bloody sheet that they had found partially stuffed into an animal hole. So after they found this, they called the Michigan State Police and they had called them to tell them what they witnessed and crazy thing about it is police were already looking in this area for a man that had injured his wife. So this couple had just encountered the 46-year-old Dennis DePew. 
Now we're going to go back to the events before all of this happened, and we're going to start from the very beginning. Now, Dennis Henry DePew was born in 1943 in Michigan and remained in his home state as an adult while working as a property assessor. Now, in 1971, he married Marilyn, who became a very popular high school counselor in Coldwater, Michigan. The couple had three children, two girls and one boy. Now, Dennis and Marilyn's marriage had become very, very rocky, and there was a lot of issues and problems that had come up within their marriage and there was just a very tense sort of walking on eggshells type of marriage for Marilyn. Now everything seemed perfect on the outside. They seemed to be a very perfect family and a beautiful loving marriage but until Dennis's behavior started to kind of turn for the worst and it suddenly changed and really Marilyn was not comfortable with this. She was not happy at all and she would confide into her friends a lot for advice and support but I think at the end of the day she really just wanted to get a divorce. So Dennis had become very controlling and he didn't allow Marilyn to make really any decisions on anything. And a lot of the times Dennis would accuse her of turning his children against him and he blamed Marilyn a lot for that. Now finally she was exhausted and just totally over this marriage. So she decided that in 1989 she was going to file for divorce. Now Dennis really begged and pleaded with her not to end this marriage and that he really wanted to make their marriage work. But Marilyn's mind had already been made up and she was just ready for the divorce. Now within the year their divorce was finalized, Dennis had moved out of the house, but he was still on the property because he had turned his guest house in the back into an office where he would work. And a lot of people have speculated that really he only did this just so he can keep an eye on the family and control them even more. But when things didn't go his way, things took a turn for the worst. On Easter Sunday, April 15th, 1990, Dennis went to the house to pick up his kids because he wanted to spend time with them. The judge had granted him visitation rights, so he was allowed to go see them every two weeks. But when he had gotten there, his children refused to go with him, and Dennis was visibly angry and very upset, and he had taken this out on Marilyn, even though she tried to reason with him, tried to calm him down, but he took his anger out on her. He allegedly pushed her down the stairs in front of all of the kids and brutally beat her while their children watched and begged him to stop. His oldest daughter had ran out of the house to get some help and when she did this, he picked up Marilyn and told all of his kids that he's going to take her to the hospital. Now when authorities had arrived there, they had called the hospitals nearby to check to see if they had come into any of the hospitals in the area. But when they didn't, the authorities had sent out a citywide search for Dennis and Marilyn. Now back to the Thorntons. Now when they had come across the bloody sheet, they contacted the Michigan State Police and officers later confirmed that the blood on the sheet belonged to Marilyn and the tire marks found at the scene did match the tires to Dennis's van. The following day, Marilyn's body was found near a roadway in Bethel Township and an autopsy showed that the 48-year-old had died from a gunshot wound to the head and Dennis was the prime suspect in her murder. Now, over the next several weeks, Dennis sent 17 letters to his friends and family from Virginia, Iowa, and Oklahoma and explained the reasoning behind his wife's killing. Now, the crazy part about all of this is that Dennis DePew was featured on an episode of Unsolved Mysteries. On March 20th, 1991, a woman had returned to her home in Dallas, Texas to find her boyfriend, Hank Queen's van outside in the driveway. It was usually kept in the garage, and so when she went inside, she noticed that he was packing his belongings. Hank had told her that his mother was sick and that he needed to take a trip to see her. Meanwhile, the episode of Unsolved Mysteries was playing in the background. The second half of the show featured a wanted man named Dennis DePew, whom officials said had murdered his wife. And what the woman didn't know is that Hank was actually Dennis, and he was trying to leave before she or any of his other girlfriends recognized him and turned him into the police. Now after that episode had aired, state and county police officials had received a tip that provided the number of the license plate that Dennis had stolen and put on his van. So Dennis had left his girlfriend's house and drove four hours to Louisiana, but it was there that he was caught by state troopers. He led them on a high-speed chase that ended in Mississippi, and the sheriff stated that during the shootout with police, Dennis took his own life by shooting himself in the head with a 357 caliber handgun. Now, this whole entire story, the reason why people think that it's believed that the Jeepers Creepers story is based upon this actual event that had taken place in Michigan is because this movie, 11 years later in August of 2001, Jeepers Creepers was released and the opening scene was so familiar 
To those who knew the story of Dennis that a lot of people started to believe that there was inspiration from this horrible event that took place and put into the beginning of this movie. Now, of course, the movie begins with the two siblings, Derry, who is played by Justin Long, and Trish, Patricia, who is played by Gina Phillips. Now, they were returning home from college, and Derry was driving the vehicle just like Ray, and Trish was in the passenger seat. As they were traveling on the long stretched road, they decided to play a game, and it was the same slogan game as the Thorntons were playing. And it wasn't very long before a van crept up behind them driving aggressively before the van sped past them, which is what Ray and Marie had experienced. Now instead of the abandoned schoolhouse, Trish and Derry saw the driver of the van parked outside of an abandoned church. Now when they drove by, they saw him holding a bloody sheet similar to what the couple had saw. Trish and Derry kept driving, but shortly after the van was tailgating them again, which was what the Thorntons said Dennis did to them when they realized they saw what he had done. Just like Marie and Ray, the siblings decided to return to the church, but instead of finding a bloody sheet, they found a body and immediately alerted the police. Although the producer of Jeepers Creepers, Victor Salva, has yet to confirm whether or not the movie was inspired by Dennis, fans had come up with their own conclusion, thinking that due to the similarities, it is likely that the Jeepers Creepers movie was inspired by the real story of Dennis. Now, of course, I'm going to link all of these articles down in the description box, so if you would like to take a look at any of these articles and go ahead and check them out about this story. Now, I had no idea that allegedly that this beginning of the Jeepers Creeper movie was about this tragic horrible story that had taken place here in Michigan. It's definitely very interesting learning about this story and seeing and hearing all the information because I had no idea about this up until a couple months ago really and of course you know the movie like I said is not real it's fake but the beginning of this movie is allegedly about this story that had happened in Coldwater Michigan. So let me know down below what you guys think. If you guys are on YouTube go ahead and leave a comment what you guys think about this story. If you know any other stories that you would like for me to talk about, go ahead and leave them below as well. You guys can go ahead and check out my TikTok page, my YouTube channel, or Instagram. I'm on all of those if you would like to connect more for more content. Or you can follow me over on TikTok at Haley V for more daily life stuff. I post random videos there all the time. So if you guys want to join me over there too, you're more than welcome to. But that is all the time we have for today. And I will see you guys in the next episode. When you turn those heaters on, is me. Got to put my cheaters on. Jeepers, creepers, where'd you get those peepers? Oh, those weepers. How they hypnotize. Yeah.